<laughs> y'all still, y'all still playing with us. Y'all still playing with the city. I'm telling yo, I want to say something so. Yo, y'all gonna stop playing yourself, man. Y'all gonna y'all, listen. When y'all was trying to gang up on Puff, we didn't. I right, listen. All right. Now you going after hope? I'm telling. Now you got the work. You gonna get the work that you want. <laughs> Now you pissing the city off. Everybody was cooling. No problems. We doing, everybody doing what they doing. We don't want, listen, go about your business, man. Atlanta had hip hop. We kept, all right, y'all had that. We going to keep it moving. We got other shit to do. We all doing other stuff. And now y'all still trying to violate and disrespect the city. Y'all are bugging. Don't think because we can't, we ain't turn around and smack the shit out of y'all that it won't happen. We've been cordial. We don't like y'all either. Y'all be thinking because we from the town and everything is love and we don't want no problems that it can't be no problems. That we sweet, that we that is like that. Nah, it ain't like that. We've been wishing a Nick would turn. When we shake y'all hand, the first thing we think, when they going to turn on us, when they going to try and play us. First thing. Soon as you become a friend, we start thinking, all right, how long before this nigga play itself? And how I'm going to react to it? How much we love you dictates how we react to it. If we don't got no love for you, we're going to do you filthy. If we got love for you, we're going to listen. We're going to still have to ruffle your shirt a little bit, but it ain't going to be to the extreme. Right now, the whole world, you trying to gang up on it. You mad at us because we ain't go up. We ain't pick Kendrick over Drake, and we ain't get involved with that. Now you trying to keep saying our superstars is on some weird shit. Nah, y'all going to stop playing with us. Y'all going to cut that out right now. You not get, listen, That's this is where the, that's it. Because it ain't going to stop until we stop you now. Now as a city, everybody's like, yo, you know what? We back on bullshit. Because I see what it is. They don't, when we leave everybody alone and go about our business, they think we pussy. Think we soft. Then we forgot who we were. Nah, we got better things to do with our time. We got kids. We got, you know what I mean, PTA meetings. We got birthdays. We got holidays. People are dying. We, we're we in tune with life. But y'all still pulling us back into the, all right. You keep acting like we ain't got a, we, we ain't got no problem with nobody having a problem. We with the dumb shit. We trying to stay out the way and live our little lives, whatever life we got left. But if this is what it's going to be, then you think you're going to get, you really think you're going to get hove and puff? Now you're not getting nothing. And I'm saying this to the whole world because you want to, y'all want to see them fail. You want to see them fall. I'm sorry. Now you're not getting nothing. You're not getting either one. This is all, I knew y'all was going to go after, go after hove if you want to. Go right ahead. Be my guest. You're going to get made an example out of. And that's going to feed right into Free and Puff. You think they ain't been... Man, go ahead, man. I keep thinking niggas ain't in, the, in them parties talking about, hell, you know when they turn on us, it's going to go... Yeah, we know. We know. Everybody been waiting for the world to turn on us. Y'all been dying to turn on this city anyway. We've been waiting for it. We always wait for it. And then that train ain't never late. And we always got a plan for it. Always. Now they going to work their plan. If you think they ain't got a plan together and individually, all right, you going to see. Some, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of people catching L's. Because as soon as the first person loses and then gets sued and now you're in debt, everybody else is going to get sued. And they're going to be in debt. Or they're going to have to really prove their case. Can't be no, he going to settle out. Nah, you're going to have to... You're going to have to prove it. And if you can't, you ain't got enough evidence, you're going to get sued. And you're going to have to pay them lawyer fees. And that's going to be a lien on your property. It's going to be a, listen, you're going to, listen, all right. <laughs> Try and get that apartment or that house or that business started with with a, owing somebody four, five, hundred thousand 500000 or 30, 40, 50000 in legal fees. Go ahead, though. Keep playing. We in the system now. But that ain't why I'm here. That ain't, I, ain't even, I ain't even here for that. I'm here to talk about my Raptors. We're, we're finishing the 24-25 the game gauntlet they were saying we had to go through. Now that we're done with that, now what? Now what are we going to do? 
Now, now hit that like button and subscribe and talk to me. Talk to me about what we gonna do now. With seven and seventeen, respectfully, still, still in a good conference, still in a weird. As weird as the Eastern Conference is, we're only five and a half games out of six, six games out of fifth. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna really get out there and, and try to 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 really do something, or you know the the tankathon, the tankalation crew? They just want to tank every every time it don't go our way in the beginning, or we don't start out. They they quick to want to tank, man. Like I don't have time for it. I'm I'm gonna be honest with y'all. I really don't have time. I'm not trying to tank every season because we don't. It don't. Sometimes it don't go your way in the beginning. You gotta work it out. You gotta become good enough to have it go your way. You have to become incredible. You have to learn, and the only way you are gonna learn is sometimes through losing. Sometimes you gotta lose, and you gotta learn those lessons through losing. That's the only way. That's the only way. Sometimes you got to go through that pain in order to get to the pleasure. We can't keep tanking and keep saying, tank, let's tank now. We lost the eye. We ain't going. Nah, you sometimes you got to put the work in, make up the difference. You got to, listen, We don't. I don't have time for that. It's not going to get no easier. It's not. We're looking at the Eastern Conference right now. It's not going to get no easier. Everybody needs every game all the time right now. It's too closely knit. It's just like last season. Even better, actually, if you're a fan of the league, you know right now, between now and the end of the season, every game means something. No matter, and it, they can play how they want to play. You can play whatever style it takes to win. That's what you got to do. Whether it means shooting threes or re whatever you got to do. Teams have to do whatever it takes to win. We're in a position where we have to learn. We have to, it's going to be a battle and we have to be truly and honestly in these battles. If we lose, then we lose. But we can't go in there thinking we're going to just mildly compete and then when things don't go our way, we'll go ahead and let them have it and then we're going to learn, magically learn how to win through osmosis or simply by just being a part of some portion of competing. You only win when you give it everything you got. You're going to limit yourself and what you could possibly become if you just half-ass it. Watch. You're going to only get half the shit you're supposed to get. Watch. Keep trying to tank every fucking season. We can't, we can't tank every season. It's annoying. Every time we don't go our way, we got to tank. Maybe, these, maybe we're not who we're supposed to be to achieve what we're supposed to achieve yet. It's not our time. It's not our time. And that's okay. We got a lot of work to do. The league is changing. Everything is shifting. We got to get in place. And we got to go through this pain and these losses. Genuinely. The East ain't going to get no easier. Especially this season. And we can't just throw the seat. We got 58 more games to go. We going to quit now? We just going to quit and be like, no, you know, we just going to go ahead and... Yeah, we just get ready for Cooper Flag and then we'll take it serious. No. If you don't know how to win and aren't trying to figure out how to win now, it ain't going to magically happen to you later on. At some point, you got to draw that line in the sand and say, if you're going to beat me, you're going to beat me. But I'm going to give it everything I got to win. Because we're literally five and a half games out of fifth. Five and a half games out of six, six games out of fifth. 76ers are in the mix. And they were like, they were in the toilet bowl a second ago. Now they're four and a half games out of fifth. Out of six and five games out of fifth. Detroit in the mix. Three, three and a half games out of fifth. Chicago and India, as, as bad as India is looking right now, they're three and a half games out of fifth. Brooklyn is only two games. Like, so it can happen. Like, we go on the win streak, it can happen. Kells is back. The Yakapurdo, that scare that, you know, Yakapurdo was out. I was panicking. I ain't going to even hold you. Then Emmanuel quickly is going to come back at some point. We'll be able to get clicking on all cylinders. But we can't just give up now and say, nah, this is, nah, go through it. Fuck it. We lose, we lose. But we can't go in there half-assing it. Okay, I, I'm not doing that. I wanted to truly and honestly see what this team was. And I ain't want to say too much and put my expectations on it just yet. 
because I didn't know what we had. Now I have a good idea. I expect us to try to win because we can't compete with these teams. It's just little. The timing of what we're executing has to be done faster, has to be done sooner. I think everybody's timing is off as far as winning is concerned. You have to play at a certain pace with a, with a different type of timing. But that comes with time and, and losing and getting information and getting experience. Like we we got a good feel for who we are, right? And it's like there's potential. Like we all know that this team has potential, but there's work to be done. And, and the only way we're going to get this work done is if we honestly go out there and try to win these games. If we lose, then go through the fire. We're going to have to deal with that pain. The only time you don't mind losing is when you half-assing it. And we're not going to get where we're trying to go half-assing it. We got to balls to the wall, try to win these games for real. And if they beat us, so be it. We don't ha we're not complete yet. But we can't half-ass it because we, we don't have the cards that we want to play. We got to play the hand we're dealt. It's a fact. You learn how to play the hands you're dealt, everything look like aces. After a certain point, everything looked like aces. The potential and the possibilities are there for anything to happen. And you have to be mindful of that and keep working genuinely. If it if the miracle don't happen, cool. Leave the door crack, it'll happen next game or the next game. But there are certain things that we got to learn to become aware of playing on the basketball court. Just being on the court, running up and down, with, it is, it's not as cut and dry as that. You know what I mean? There's a lot of games within the games that we need to learn. There's a lot of... Little things, little things that happen during the game that we got to be aware of, that we got to react to, that we got to take into consideration. We're playing, but we're playing in this blissful space of we're really not aware of the other things that can help or hinder us until the other team utilizes it and we we get caught in the mix and it costs us a loss. These other older teams, more mature teams, veteran teams, they're aware of it. Like when I saw it, when we played against the Mavs, it was just two teams playing at two different paces. There was no collision. If if a, if one team is better than the other, the team who is lesser or the underdog has to collide. Their style has to crash out with the better team. Because if you're playing your style and they're playing their style and there's no real resistance, guess what happens? The team that the better team has an easier way and an easier road to victory. Because you're, you're not going to keep up with their pace. You're not. Because if you're playing your pace and they're playing their pace, there's no conflict. There has to be conflict. Get in the way. Crash out. That's the one thing we didn't do against Dallas. They were just playing their pace, and we was playing our pace, and then when they took their foot off the gas, we started to come back. Which is a which is very, very, very conf not confusing, but it's, it's an illusion that you're actually fighting to get back into the game when they've already took control and now they're taking their foot off the pedal. It looks like we're striving to make it competitive when we're actually wasting all this energy fighting to get back into the fight, and then we run out of time. We've done this numerous times, and I've talked about it numerous times. The fight is for the control. If you allow them to have an advantage by not fighting intensively intensely, and putting all your effort into when the battle is to be. When you see them revving up, they're trying to fight for control. Fight back immediately. Immediately. Because they're trying to take control. You have to feel when a team is trying to take control over the game. And you got to fight for it. Let Make sure it's a fight. You got to crash out. You can't just say, I'm, gonna play, I'm just going to play my game. You can't because you're not going to win. The better team is going to win when you're both allowed to play your styles. You're going to have to crash out and be a deterrent. There has to be conflict. We have to create more conflict. We have to. We have to. There's a lot of stuff that we got to learn. I understand that. But we cannot allow these teams to continue to play their style of play and be comfortable in that regard. Because we don't stand a chance. Because we're still figuring our thing out. They're doing what they do in a fashion that's befitting of their ambition. They want to win this game. The sooner they gain control, the better off they know they are. We got to fight for control. That's it. We're not fighting to get back into the control conversation. 
We have to fight for the, the initial control from the start. We can't, we can't keep fighting from these leads from behind because you're giving them this cushion to cruise and we're wasting all our energy just getting back into the fight. We got to get hot, white hot, in order to get back into these games and win one of those. We're simply doing ourselves a disservice because we're fooling ourselves into thinking that we're competing when in actuality the game is already over. It was over two or three quarters ago, a quarter ago. The minute they have control, they feel like they've won. You have to make them feel uncomfortable. There has to be more conflict. And I don't mean conflict as far as physically crashing and, and creating chaos and fighting on the court. I mean, you have to be productive to the point where there's a concern that this game may go into your hands. They know we can't shoot. We're not that good of a shooting team right now, but we can score. But they also know we're going to create turnovers and opportunities. They got 24 points over turnovers. Dallas don't play defense like that. Let's be clear. They don't really play defense like that. They're a veteran scoring, you know, shooting team. With Now they have these bigs that are, that are athletic enough that they can release them for an easy basket down the court after we hit threes. Jason Kidd is very smart, very old school, though. You know what I mean? We're around the same age, so he's like, what, a year older? I know exactly what he's doing. Very smart. Every time we hit a three, he will release a big, an a athletic big down the court, and they use those bigs. You add those athletic bigs to what they, they got, they, and then you have Klay Thompson, and they won, what, six games? They have the longest win streak right now in the NBA. They're on fire. We can't let them just do what they want to do. We would have had to shut down Kyrie. We so we matched Luka with, with, with Scotty, which was great, but there was no fucking answer for Kyrie. There is no answer for Kyrie. But you have to try. We need to lock. We, we needed to be more of, it should have been more competitive conflict. It should have been as far as scoring. We should, we it. We got up enough shots, but it was like, it was a little too little too late. And that's another thing. The timing of it. Too little too late. You know what I mean? Like we definitely have to put more emphasis on putting a pep in the production step. Those numbers don't mean anything if they come after the fact. We have a lot of after the fact. I know a lot of y'all like, yo, the production is great. After the fact, it doesn't matter. If it's after the fact, it does not matter. If it's in the initial battle for control, yes, it counts. But if those numbers come after the other team has established that this game is damn near over, we're just fighting to make the score respectable in the end, no, those, those numbers don't count. They don't. And I've been sitting out and I've been watching everything, and y'all think because I'm not out here that I'm not paying attention. Everybody's starting to sound the same. Everybody, the analytic people are starting to sound the same. All of it is starting to sound the same and look the same. Now I get to come back and be that breath of fresh air. And we're going to watch them imitate and mimic me again. Like they did the first time and try. And don't give, I don't get no credit, but you're just going to imitate me. It's a lot of people that's going to be doing it this time. I got some new shit. <laughs> I got, woo, <laughs> I got some new shit. But yeah, I think, I now what? What are we going to do now? I'm fighting this little, this little sniffle. Hopefully, I'm, I haven't been sick in like four years, so I'm not trying to catch a cold now, but sometimes the sinuses act up. But um, now what? What are we going to do now? Are we going to tank or are we going to compete and try to... What are we doing, man? I'm only, I just want us to compete to win. If we lose, then cool. May the best team win, but... I'm not going to fall for the banana in the tailpipe where it's like, you know, after the fact, we're competing and hitting shots. No, I want them when the other team is trying to take control, we should be fighting as much as we can. If they beat us in that regard, cool. But I don't want to get caught up in what happens after this, after the fact. You know what I mean? Because there's not a lot of credit and. and because it's not happening during an intensified moment. 
you know, the other team has become somewhat passive because they have control. Now they're cruising and we're fighting to get back into the fight, which is a lot of energy and a lot of things have to go right. We ha How we start is very important. How we set the tone and how we have teams understand that no matter what, we're coming in with the intention of winning from the start, regardless of who's playing or who's not. We're not playing. Like, I don't want... The one thing I notice our players, they get caught up in the plays. They get caught up in what we're doing and not so much what they should be doing as pure competitors. Because sometimes those things don't line up. Sometimes you as a competitor, you know what's going to work. And sometimes running a play a specific way only plays into the philosophies of the defense. So you're going to have to get it by any means necessary. You know what I mean? Any means necessary. And they've already seen all our plays. They've studied film as well. At some point, we have to adapt to what's in front of us and by any means necessary, get it done. But that's going to come with time. We all have to memorize what we're supposed to do and internalize what we're supposed to be and who we're supposed to be in the offense and our jobs and our duties and responsibilities within the offense and defense. Once that becomes, you know, just like any other job, once you become acclimated with what your responsibilities are, then you can start doing all the fly shit you like to do. I understand that. I just want us to be a lot more competitive in the initial fight for the win, for the game control. Because a lot of these teams, if you just hold on and fight them back a little while longer, they'll tap out. They'll make mistakes too. But it's just that we'll put ourselves so far behind the eight ball that when they start making mistakes, it's just for us to get back into a respectable scoring sp uh, um, score. Not so much for us to truly compete for the win. You know what I'm saying? So, and I think I don't think there's a team we can't beat. But we have a lot to learn, and we don't have the experience at certain positions as far as production under fire and with expectation. Like, I don't think any of the players that we have, have have really played with real expectations on them. Outside of RJ, you know what I mean? It's, everyone else has played with their, approx like, that simple approximation of, of um, responsibility and expectation. Easy for them to live up to. Like, the Knicks, when, when RJ was with the Knicks, like, the expectation was for them to go far and handle business and... He understands what that's like. A lot of our players have to learn, understand because the Raptors fan base, there's an expectation. A lot of expectations for the players individually and for the team as a whole and the coaching staff and the ownership. There's tons of expectation. Right now, everyone is reserving the right to let them, you know, dance around the club without the expectation. But after a while, we want to see what you can choreograph and which, how you can entertain us by wins, via wins. No one wants to be a part of losing. No one's interested in losing, even if it's for a righteous cause, unless it's gaining momentum towards the win. And we honestly have to be in a space where winning has to be acquired. We can't just be losing for the sake of tanking. Oh, because there's something better somewhere. No, you got to compete, accept it. If we don't get where we're trying to go, as long as we're giving it 100%, we're going to figure it out. We have to honestly go in there with the intention of figuring out how to beat these teams, how to win these games, how to win these possessions, how to overcome these turnovers. There's always going to be setbacks and turnovers. We got to overcome that and still compete and still produce. And I believe we're going to be all right, man. You know what I mean? It's just it went from the toughest part of the season <laughs> to the toughest part of the season. <laughs> it's just it's going to be tough all the way around. But tell me what you think in the comment section, man. Like, it don't get no easier. I It don't. Everything is so tightly wound and everybody needs it. It's going to be pure competition, and I'm I'm happy for it. Let's see. Let's, let's continue to grow and figure it out. But we got to start trying to win. Not just compete. Not just we've, – we've proven that we can compete and that we got some good parts and they're in the right place. Let's try – let's try to win some games. And see what happens.